In this section, we're going to explore something called shadow density and multi-pass rendering. Now, what that is, is that instead of doing everything in a single pass in Lightwave, although it's fairly quick and straightforward, it may not be the most efficient way of doing things. So we're going to load up our old building picture. And once again, set our display so we can see our background image and the camera view. And we're going to have, uh, let's have our UFO come up around the building, but this time we're going to have shadow falling on the building and we're going to do it in two passes. And the reason we do it in two passes is because it gives us a lot more control. We can fix things in post, we can tweak the colors, we can play with the shadows a little bit. We don't spend a whole lot of time trying to get our objects with the front projection maps to line up perfectly and to have perfectly matching colors. In fact, we're gonna, with the use of shadow density, we don't have to play with that at all. Now, not everybody uses shadow density because it is not the easiest thing to understand, but it's not that hard. So the first thing we're going to do is create a shadow catching object which will be in the shape of this building. We've popped in the modeler for a moment. So we're going to create a box object. I'm going to go with the default. Activate. The only thing I'm going to change about this box is I'm going to move it so the pivot point is in this upper right corner. And the only reason I'm doing that is just it'll make it a little bit easier for me to position it once I get it into layout. And we have our box. I'm going to give it a surface name of uh, Shadow Box and save it as Shadow Box. Yes. And now I will be sending this object to layout. First thing I'm going to do is set my ground plane so it more or less matches my background image. This is more personal preference than anything. I just like to do it. It helps me mentally visualize. Uh, in compositing, you have to do a lot of 3D animation, visualization, imagination. It's, it's as tough to do as it is to say, but if this is the kind of work you want to do, get used to it. So I'm going to move my box, got my corner up here, kind of matching up that corner there, going to switch to rotate. And now you see why I decided to put my handle up in the corner. I'm going to do a little bit of fudging here with the rotating. And this box is only a one meter box. If I was real serious, if this was a real job, I would have hopefully have been on the side of the chute. I've been there to take measurements. I would have a, I often take a notebook with me. And even if it's just by eye, I take a look at the building um, I count the floors, make a little note, count the distance from the camera to the subject, uh, take any kind of meeting, uh, readings, any kind of notes that I can because when I get back here, if I know the camera has a certain kind of lens, I'll go into my camera properties and match that camera as closely as possible. Or start try to set up the scene as to resemble the original scene as close as I can in my lightwave environment. However, in this case, I didn't have any of that stuff. I took the picture, but I didn't take any notes. So what I'm going to do right now, I have my angle more or less set up. I'm going to go to Stretch Tool, and then just match the sides. And you can see how it's not really set up to match it perfectly, but that doesn't matter. It matters more when you're doing if I was doing this in a single pass, but since I'm not, I don't really care that much. I'm now going to, let's see, let's adjust the lights. 
just going to rotate the light because I know most of the light is hitting this side and that side is more in a shadow so we're going to kind of match it here take a look at the perspective okay I think my that's looking pretty good and as long as I'm here I'm going to add a ground plane and that is just my one meter square size it up a whole lot and you see it's on the ground plane it's not really matching up because my background the ground plane is really kind of meeting here so we'll switch back to here and move my ground plane up I think it was right about there close enough for us right now alright let's load up our subject the UFO Let's see it's coming out of the building let's put it right here let's render a sample and well first we have to turn on our ray trace shadows so we get a shadow oh, not too bad except I think I would like to have it moving around the corner Get a little closer let's take a look at that okay that's not too bad now I could go in and apply all the um, from projection mapping. In fact, if I do that right now, select my ground in my shadow box. I'm holding down the shift key so I can select both of these at the same time. That way when I apply my surface from projection with the old building, it's applying equally to both of them. Now you see there's distortion on here. That's just OpenGL problems. If I render this out, my very dark shadow is falling on my building, which kind of matches. Uh, if the shadow was going down farther, we would also see it falling onto the plane down there. So what we have here is our UFO rendered over this shadow catching object with our background image. If we look at the alpha on this, our shadow catching object is completely solid, as is our UFO, but we're not seeing any of the background image. So now we're going to go into the surface editor. We're going to play with one of the advanced settings. Under advanced we have options for alpha channel. Now generally alpha channel is surface opacity which is how much you can see through it and that's tied in generally to the transparency but we're going to switch this to shadow density now that's the only setting you have to change to get this so now we're going to re-render this so now when we look at it only the ground level was selected so even though that was the only setting we changed is now rendered completely transparent now let's change the setting for the shadow catching box we're going to switch that also to shadow density do a quick render and look what we have here only the shadow is showing up not the big square box not the big flat plane which means when we composite this later when we put this together when we lay this image on the only thing that will be mixed in is this area here and that UFO so we want to make a few more adjustments one of the things we're going to do is take out our background image even though it wouldn't be mixed in probably because the alpha is solid black 
I wouldn't count on it. Uh, compositing programs sometimes do things a little oddly, or they do things differently. Some there's different types of ways of putting a 32-bit image together, and you just want to avoid trouble whenever you can. So we're going to change this. Now what we're doing here is defining the color of the shadow, which is generally black. So they're both set to black. Another quick render will show us. We're not, it appears to be only the UFO in the scene. However, when we switch this over to alpha, remember the white area, this is like a cookie cutter. And all the black area of the image, that's transparent. The white area is what gets layered on top. So we have our UFO image. We also have our alpha. So this area, this is going to cut out that part of the black. Now let's bring this home just a little bit more. I'm going to change it. Uh, let's see, give us, say, a red shadow. All right, we see the whole thing being red. See the whole thing being red. However, when we look at the alpha channel, it's still black there. Still black all around here, but it's white here, which means the image, we've got kind of a, it's not solid black, it's the color of this in the shadow. So let's go back and do a solid black background here. We're going to render it with anti-aliasing just so it looks nice. And we're going to save this out as a 32-bit image. And we're going to load this image back into Lightwave in layers. So we're going to save this out. Save image. Any 32-bit image will work. I choose Targa more out of habit than any other real preference. So we've saved this image. It looks like it's just a UFO, but it's really a UFO with some black area in it. And that black's going to be mixed in with this white alpha.